The Chargers released their final 53-man roster yesterday, but today they're making more moves. We've signed a couple guys to the practice squad. It's 15 out of 17 right now. Plus, we have actually someone from the IPP, so technically we have an extra practice squad spot, but that's for later on in this video because we have a trade and we also have someone that we claimed off of waivers. And let's just get right into it because I want to show you this is going to be the practice squad guys, okay? 15 out of 17 so far. We have 17 total, but only have 15 guys. And we also claimed Hassan Haskins off of waivers. He's a running back from Tennessee. He actually went to college at Michigan with Jim Harbaugh. This is more of like a special teams guy. And in order to make room for him on this roster, you can see that they waived JT Woods. And I knew that JT Woods and Tony Jefferson probably were kind of two of those guys that just barely made that roster over some other guys like you know, Draymond Morris Brash, but Hassan Haskins making this roster because of his special teams ability. And obviously he's a running back. So when I was predicting Isaiah Spiller to make this roster, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, okay, they're wanting someone to play special teams. Hassan Haskins is a much better special teams player than Isaiah Spiller, probably a better running back as well. So really good move there. I'm glad that they went out and got this guy. JT Woods, though, is waived, probably going to be on this practice squad, so expect him to fill out one of these uh, two spots that is remaining, but let me scroll down so we can see all of these guys. So, Carson Barnhart, undrafted free agent guard slash tackle from Michigan. He, he basically played all over the offensive line from Michigan last year, um, except center, I think, but Luke Benson, tight end from Georgia Tech, really athletic tight end that I liked a lot, and you can see... Zach Hines is not on the UD or not on the uh, practice squad here. So Luke Benson actually beat out Zach Hines, which is kind of crazy to think about. I like Zach Hines had a bunch of good plays in practice. Luke Benson did as well, but I thought they both did enough to probably make this practice squad. Maybe they just wanted only one of those guys, but I don't know. They also have T Tucker Fisk on the practice squad. And I thought he did enough to maybe even make the roster because he was a really good blocker from what I saw from him in uh, the preseason. But Andrew Farmer, outside linebacker from the Lane College, bro, Lane College legend. He was a UDFA two years ago, making the practice squad. I also think he has got a pretty good ceiling. And then Matt Hankins. I thought he absolutely did enough in that last preseason game to make the practice squad. Let me zoom in just a little bit here so you can get a better view of these guys. Chris Hinton made the team or made the practice squad. Didn't make the team, but he is a Michigan defensive lineman. And you know what? He made this practice squad over Jared Clark because I don't see Jared Clark here either. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste, the linebacker, UDFA from Ole Miss, another linebacker making this, you know roster kind of on the practice squad cornelius johnson from michigan that last draft choice that we had jalen johnson from east carolina i thought he looked pretty good as a udfa but it's just such a crowded wide receiver room but he made some plays so i'm glad that he is on the practice squad robert kennedy made the practice squad as well from nc state i like that alex leatherwood <laughs> bro okay that, yeah uh I knew that they liked, you know, the size and the athleticism. So I'm glad that he's on the practice squad, not taking up a spot on the final 53. But speaking about a spot on the final 53, Traymond Morris Brash cleared waivers and we still have him on this team. So thank goodness that he did not get picked up by some other team because I really liked what I saw from him. CJ Okoye is in the International Players Program. So that's what that means, the IPP. So he technically does not count as this uh, practice squad spot. So we do have an extra spot on this uh, practice squad because of that. Shaq Quarterman, the linebacker, they want that linebacker depth and the special teams ability as well. He also had a forced fumble in the preseason. And Isaiah Spiller also cleared waivers and he is on the practice squad. Man, I I, I don't know what's been going on with Isaiah Spiller, but he, he looked so good at Texas A&M and he just couldn't put it together in the NFL. Now you're also gonna notice from this list, Donald Parham is also not here. So Tucker Fisk and Luke Benson made it over Donald Parham and Zach Hines. But let me just go over here to Twitter to show you Hassan Haskins. You can see he was picked up off the waiver wire. But look right here. This is Thomas Harper, the UDFA from Notre Dame that we had. Bro, I loved Thomas Harper when I was watching the film from him in college. But, ah, uh, man, the Raiders picked him up. So that's another guy that is a former Charger that Tom Telesco is going out and getting. This guy wasn't even a Tom Telesco guy, and he's still picking up our guys. So Tom Telesco is still picking up the scraps left by the Chargers, even when it's not from his own regime. But let's move on because 
Yeah, tight end Donald Parham did not make this practice squad, but he signed with the Broncos. That is another guy that we had going to a division rival. Now, this one, I don't know how much of a difference he's going to make on the Broncos roster or if he even, you know, makes the roster because he's he's just on the practice squad here. And Thomas Harper was picked up off the waiver. So that means that he is on the final 53 for the Raiders. I think Thomas Harper would have a better shot at having, you know, a, a difference making career with the Raiders than Donald Parham would with the Broncos. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. I like Thomas Harper a lot, bro. So that one hurts me, to be honest with you. But now let's move on because we also have a guy that we picked up from the Broncos, Sam Mustafer, who actually is going to be on our practice squad, not on the final 53, so we don't have to cut anybody. But the Broncos offered him a practice squad spot, but he chose a new start and he is going to the Chargers. And this is interesting because let me just pull this over here. You can see his PFF grades from this preseason. He is a better run blocker, it looks like, than a pass blocker uh 80.6 pass blocking grade against the colts but then 89.4 run blocking grade against the cardinals played 91 snaps this preseason so it's a pretty good sample size from him he only had this last year on the broncos and uh let me move my camera here so you can see who he played for he played for the ravens in 2023 so this is another former raven that is going to be on the Chargers on the practice squad so not really on the final 53 but this is something that, you know, he could be a really good backup centerpiece for us because we don't really have a lot of good interior offensive linemen like we got Bradley Bozeman. Yeah, but if he goes down, what, you're going to put in Brendan Hymas? Are you confident in Brendan Hymas? I, I, I don't know. So this guy could be a sneaky signing. He is 28, so he doesn't have like a crazy high ceiling or anything, but something to keep an eye on if there's an injury. I think this guy could be, you know, he could come in handy. So next up is elijah molden who the chargers actually traded for from the titans and this is interesting too because it's another titan on this roster let me move this so you can see this tweet better but this means now that elijah molden christian fulton uh tyre tart and bud dupree was even on the titans at one point so that's four four different guys that were on that titans defense now on the chargers roster and, and so now they're really hitting that titans pipeline and that Ravens pipeline. That's pretty interesting. This is probably just going to be a seventh round pick. It says late draft compensation, but this is Elijah Molden's PFF. You can see all of his grades right here uh, from the 2023 season. He's been with the Titans for three years. He's entering his fourth season. He's really more of like a, uh, you can see he's 5'10", 192. So he's not like an outside cornerback, but I don't want to say he's like a nickel either. He can play safety as well as cornerback. You can see he's even listed at safety. But where did he line up for the most part last year? If I can just look at his snaps. So you can see here, these are the snaps that he lined up. 222 in the box, 274 at free safety, 198 in the slot, only one at outside corner. So yeah, that makes sense. And Jesse Minter, he really wants to have those guys that can play multiple positions like we talked about. Elijah Molden getting him for only a seventh or a sixth round pick. We're still going to have to wait and see what that uh, compensation is, but I think this is a good move. And also, it's going to be interesting to see because this is a trade. So the, he's going to be on the final 53. So who is going to be cut? Because JT Woods was cut for the sake of Hassan Haskins being on the final 53. So I'm thinking now, like, do you cut Tony Jefferson? Uh, do you cut Jarrett Patterson? Because you would now have another running back, so you you don't want to have five running backs. So would you cut Jarrett Patterson for the sake of having Elijah Molden, and then you know you cut JT Woods for the running back, and then you add that new safety, and then take away another running back? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's probably going to be Jarrett Patterson. So those are all the updates that you need to know as of right now. As soon as we get more information, I'm going to talk about it in my next video. So thank you so much for watching. And if you did not see my last video, you can click right here.